What's up, guys? So as some of you know, we're just a few days away from the blasphemous, degenerate, hedonistic, pagan ritual known as Halloween. So I figured I'd make a Halloween special. There aren't a lot of Halloween-friendly subjects I can think of when it comes to the subject of hair loss. So I've decided to create a video about pumpkin seed oil because, you know, pumpkin seed oil, as the name implies, comes from pumpkins. And pumpkins are sometimes utilized in the creation of jack-o'-lanterns. So there you go. That officially makes this a Halloween themed episode of the Kevin Mann show or whatever you want to call it. So let's open this pumpkin up and scoop into her guts so we can find out whether or not pumpkin seed oil is beneficial in the good fight against hair loss. So using pumpkin seed oil to fight hair loss is not a new concept by any means. It has long been promoted in naturopathic circles as a natural hair loss alternative to pharmaceutical treatments like finasteride and minoxidil. It is a frequent subject of interest in the hair loss community and as such it is promoted by supplement com companies pretty hard as being an effective remedy by itself or as an in ingredient in dietary supplements marketed towards hair loss. So anyone who is a hair loss veteran knows through simple trial and error that 99% of everything out there marketed towards hair loss is complete bullshit. And this is especially true when it comes to natural treatments, you know, as most of them are not backed by very strong clinical research. I mean, not to mention the fact that hair loss itself is a natural physiological process. So in the case of hair loss, nature is our enemy. So it doesn't seem very prudent to turn to nature to find an answer to a problem that nature is responsible for to begin with. However, I want to be fair. I mean, you know, sometimes you can fight nature with nature, like in the case of uh, uh, fighting fire with water. And I want to, I want this video to be educational. So let's take an objective look at the theory uh, be, and research behind pumpkin seed oil so we can see if the claims of its efficacy are supported by any strong evidence-based research. So the reason why pumpkin seed oil is claimed to be a viable therapy in the treatment of androgenic alopecia is that it is allegedly a natural inhibitor of the 5A reductase enzyme, which as I'm sure most of you know by now, is the enzyme which converts testosterone into the extremely destructive dihydrotestosterone, DHT, which causes hair loss and a whole bunch of other really nasty things in the body. And as such, due to the role DHT plays in enlarging the prostate, it has also been theoretically proposed as a treatment for BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, but we're going to stick with hair loss today. That'll be a subject for another video, maybe. So basically, it is supposed to be like a natural finasteride, but how does it suppress the 5A reductase enzyme exactly? Well, the theory behind that is that it is due to the presence of chemicals called phytosterols, which are known to inhibit 5A reductase activity in hamster studies. But it's also claimed that pumpkin seed oil is an antioxidant, it's an anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and anti-bad stuff in general, much like the claims for every alternative quack medicine out there you see gluten-phobic Karen shopping for at Whole Foods uh, really just like to rave about. So is there any solid data on pumpkin seed oil, though, as it pertains to hair loss? Well, the short answer is no, but I'm going to go over the research anyways, especially since the one human study here is often quoted on forums as well as my own page as the definitive evidence that pumpkin seed oil works for hair loss. So let's go ahead and look at the data on pumpkin seed oil that was performed on actual human beings and see what we've got. So this first study, it was a double-blinded uh, randomized control trial published in 2014 and done in Korea. Hopefully it wasn't North Korea, but anyways, it involved two groups, including a treatment group, which consisted of 37 men, and a placebo group of 39 men, all of whom had Norwood types of ranging from 2, so minor baldness, all the way to Norwood level 5, so severe androgenic alopecia in that case. And they were all off treatment for hair loss treatments for three months before beginning the study, so that affected rules out any possibility of influence from other treatments. So, so far this study looks like it has pretty good methodology. So the treatment group received 400 milligrams per day of pumpkin seed oil in the form of a supplement called Octa Sabal Plus, which I'll talk about more in a moment. The placebo group got similar capsules, but as you can imagine, they didn't have any active ingredient, hence why they were placebo. The study was conducted for 24 weeks and included self-assessment as well as investigator assessment of hair growth and also a photo trichogram to measure hair counts and hair thickness. So the photo trichogram is obviously the best tool here, as a microscope can much better measure hair count than the naked human. 
human eye, even when it's done under uh, the eye of a professional. So the phototrichogram was used before treatment to measure baseline hair levels, and then again at 12 weeks and then 24 weeks. The other methods of assessment were also used, but I don't hold them to be nearly as valuable uh, because like I said, a phototrichogram can give an exact hair measurement as opposed to an estimated measurement of hair count over time. So what did this study from Good Korea conclude? So looking first at the patient self-assessment, there was no difference in self-rated improvement and self-rated satisfaction scores after 12 weeks, which isn't a big deal because oftentimes even legitimate pharmaceuticals like finasteride will not yield good results so soon. But after 24 weeks, though, uh, using a 0 to 10 score, the treatment group had an average self-assessed uh, assessed hair improvement of 3.4 versus 2.1 with placebo and a self-satisfaction score of 3.5 for treatment versus 2.3 for placebo. The 0 to 10 score metric was graded by 0 being no change or worse results and 10 being complete recovery. And the 0 to 10 score for satisfaction was 0 was basically complete disappointment and 10 was complete complete satisfaction. So the improvement seemed pretty modest for both groups, though it seemed to be a little better for the pumpkin seed oil group. So many people who read the study will stop right there and include, holy shit, pumpkin seed oil may not be great, but it does something, right? Well, let's not get too excited yet and buy up every $50 bottle of pumpkin seed oil from Whole Foods. Let's first continue to look at the results of this study. So let's look at the investigator assessment next. Looking at 24 weeks, 2% of the subjects on treatment seem to have gotten worse, whereas 28% of the subjects in the control group seem to have gotten worse. And then 44% of the treatment group were rated as slightly uh, being slightly or moderately improved, and only 7.7% .7 of the placebo group were slightly or moderately improved. It's interesting that the majority of patients in each group, namely 51.4% uh, in the treatment group and 64.1% in the control group, showed no change in their hair growth. So for most people, this treatment didn't do squat, although it appears at least based on the investigator visual assessment, there were more people who improved on the pumpkin seed oil compared to placebo. But like I said, uh, like I said earlier, self-assessments and investigator assessments aren't as good as a photo trichogram uh, result. So let's get into the findings based on that tool. So two things were measured, hair count and hair thickness. Let's look at hair thickness first. In both the treatment and placebo subjects, there was an increase in hair thickness over time, and there was no significant difference in the amount of hair thickness in the treatment versus placebo. So it doesn't appear that pumpkin seed oil had any effect on hair thickness. In addition to this, if you look at the graph I'm showing here, there was quite an increase in hair thickness in the placebo group who got no active treatment. The same thing happened when looking at hair counts, both treatment and placebo seemed to cause a significant increase in hair counts, though in this case, the treatment group had a greater increase than the placebo group. Because the graphs show overall improvement in hair growth and hair thickness in both groups, it is hard to reconcile these objective findings uh, with the investigator findings uh, that there seem to be much better visual improvement in the treatment group, but I would put more trust in these objective findings of the phototrichograms than visual assessment because, you know, like I said, phototrichograms today are the best tool for measuring hair growth. So why did the placebo group grow hair back, you might wonder? So here's the explanation for this. Hair follicles, regardless of whether or not they're crippled by the male pattern baldness gene, go through various cycles, including an antigen growth phase, a catagen inactive phase, as well as a telogen resting phase. So basically, there are cycles of hair growth which can be influenced by DHT in, individual, in individuals who are susceptible to male pattern baldness. But even men who are balding will have periods of growth that sometimes greater than other times, which is why many individuals sometimes report seasonal sheds where their hair loss seems worse at certain times than other Others, and oftentimes they'll freak out about it because they didn't see a doctor and have it explained to them that this is perfectly normal. That is why I always tell people to stop freaking out about the shed. If a shed from a hair loss treatment makes you upset, then you're going to be really upset when you start shedding as a result of androgenic alopecia with no pharmaceutical intervention because that's never going to grow back unlike a shed that will happen with something like minoxidil and finasteride, for instance. But anyways, getting back to the study... Some of the findings in this study may be explained by the seasonal changes in hair growth cycles I mentioned, and if we factor those out, the effect of pumpkin seed oil at best seems to be very, very minimal, if indeed it does anything at all. I mean, you have to remember, this is just one small study, and to date, I mean, as far as I know at least, there have been no subsequent studies in humans to validate this study's results reliability. That's in, And that's really, really important, because you can't rule out the possibility that the results of the study were just due to chance when you have no other studies to confirm the reliability of the results. So one study, 
no matter how good it is, is usually not sufficient. And that doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that more data is needed. I mean, this could be interesting preliminary data, but we don't have anything beyond this, so we can't really uh, uh, put much faith in it. But even if you were to uh, take this study seriously, there is one very major flaw I'd like to point out that you should consider, and that is that the subjects in the treatment group never even got pumpkin seed oil. I mean, that's right. For some reason, the researchers glossed over the fact that the supplements they used did not actually even contain pumpkin seed oil. I mean, what the subjects received instead was that bogus uh, natural supplement I mentioned earl earlier called Octasabal Plus, and it's a scam naturopathic product comparable to other natural hair loss scams that I talked about before on my channel, like Viviscal and Nutrafol, and I've not only covered them, but I've reviewed them extensively, so I recommend checking out those videos if you haven't seen them. So, Anyways, what Octasabal Plus actually is and what it contains is pumpkin seed powder. And you may think, oh, so what? I mean, it's similar enough, right? Well, let me remind you that the title of this study is Effect of Pumpkin Seed Oil on Hair Growth, not the Effect of Pumpkin Seed Powder on Hair Growth. In addition to pumpkin seed powder, though, this Octasabal Plus thingamajig also contains mixed vegetable powder, evening primrose powder, corn silk extracted powder, red, clo uh, red clover powder, as well as tomato powder. So even if there is an effect from this product, we have no idea if it's at all related to the pumpkin seed powder or some other individual ingredient or a combination of ingredients. So this is a highly misleading study. I mean, when you're trying to ascertain the efficacy of a product for anything, you want to make absolute sure that there are no confounding variables. So for instance, if I wanted to see how effective celery root was for hair loss, it wouldn't be a good study if I applied celery root mixed with minoxidil as well as a whole bunch of other ingredients because there's no way to determine if the effect were due to the celery root or one of the other ingredients. So bottom line, this study doesn't prove anything. The objective differences differences between the control group and treatment group are clinically very, very small, and it is impossible to determine if pumpkin seed or powder, I guess, was responsible for any of the differences if the differences were indeed due to any intervention at all. So if people look at this and decide, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use pumpkin seed oil to stop my hair loss, then, you know, I wish you the best of luck because holy shit, you're going to need it. So like I said, there are no other human studies, but last year there was at least an animal study published, which is interesting because they compared pumpkin seed oil to 2% minoxidil, which is the type of minoxidil which is usually marketed towards women. So anyways, this study is called Beneficial Effects of Pumpkin Seed Oil as a Topical Hair Growth Promoting Agent in a Mice Model. So this is an animal study, and it also looks at topical pumpkin seed oil as opposed to oral. But to their credit, at least they're actually using pumpkin seed oil this time in this study instead of pumpkin seed powder. So the title isn't misleading. So what they did here is they removed hair from the back of mice using a uh, depilatory cream, which is kind of like Nair as it removes the hair, but it doesn't damage the hair follicle. And then they observed how rapidly the hair grew back using different treatments on different groups of rodents. They had a control group that didn't receive any treatment, uh, and the other treatment groups all received topical testosterone, which in mice inhibits hair growth, which is different from humans, where androgens only inhibit hair growth on the scalp in individuals who are genetically predisposed to androgenic alopecia. So, in addition to testosterone, groups of mice also received pumpkin seed oil at concentrations of either 5 or 10%, and one group received testosterone plus minoxidil at 2%. And at the end of the study, and as a vegan this really pisses me off I should say, so trigger warning, the mice were sadly sacrificed and their skin was examined under a microscope to look at the percentage of follicles in the antigen growth phase. Here is a graph of the results these poor mice gave their lives for. The mice who received no treatment and no testosterone testosterone had the greatest percentage of antigen growth phase. The mice who received just testosterone had the worst percentage. Looking at the pumpkin seed oil, there was a significant improvement over testosterone alone when it was given at a 10% but not 5% concentration. Nevertheless, 2% minoxidil with testosterone had the greatest effect on the antigen phase percentage, almost equal to the mice in the control group who didn't get testosterone at all. So looking at this study, it appears that pumpkin seed oil at 10% might stimulate hair growth, but not as much so as 2% minoxidil. Keep in mind, though, that this is an artificial situation because a mouse is a different species with a dramatically different genetic makeup compared to a human. I mean, we already see a huge genetic difference between various human beings and how they respond to androgens as well as various hair loss treatments, so those would certainly be even more pronounced when talking about different species. So bottom line, there is not enough evidence to confirm the claim 
claims about pumpkin seed oil's efficacy as a hair loss treatment. I mean, if there was enough interest, maybe we could get some follow-up human trials that actually test pumpkin seed oil and not powder and not in combination with other ingredients. But until then, let's just stick with the treatments that have clinically proven efficacy like finasteride and minoxidil. I mean, you don't always get a second chance with hair loss, so relying on theory as opposed to outcome is something you're going to have to do at your own peril. So anyways, I hope everybody has a great Halloween, but when you carve up your pumpkins this year, don't think you're going to regrow your hair by spreading any of the pumpkin goop on your scalp. I'd rather just save it and make a nice pumpkin pie, hopefully a vegan one. Uh, but until then, I hope you guys have fun. Don't forget to vote if you live in the United States, and I will be back with more content soon. Take care.